This is my geometry course. Today we're going to continue to learn proofs and properties of equality and congruence. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. As in the last class, we're going to prove statements with two column proofs, but uh, now we're going to use the vertical angles theorem. Now, I'll give you a screenshot of all the theorems and postulates we've learned so far. And remember, the vertical angles theorem was the first theorem we learned in this class. We learned postulates before that, but the, that was the first theorem. So we're going to use that in this proof. And we're also introducing the idea of uh, labeling angles with numbers. So you see we have a number 3 here. That refers to this angle. And the number 2 here refers to this angle. So that's another way you can notate ang or, or label angles. So let's do this proof together. We're going to start with the given information, which is angle or the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. That's given. Remember, you always have to give your justification over here. So we know that angle 1 is, or the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. And we're trying to show that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Now we know by the vertical angles theorem that uh, vertical angles, these two angles, are equal. So if you have two lines, like so, vertical angles, the angles across from each other, are equal in measure. So those two are equal, and also these two are also equal. But those, those are different angles, so I give them a, 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 a double arc. So that's the vertical angles theorem. And by the way, I didn't mention in previous classes that uh, vertical angles can also be called opposite angles. These are opposite angles. So if you hear that phrase opposite angles, that means the same thing as vertical angles. So angle 3 is equal to angle 2 because they're vertical angles. So we know 1 is equal to 2 because that's given information. And we also know that 3 is equal to 2 because that's given information. So because these angles are both equal to 2, the angles themselves, 1 and 3, must be equal to each other. So that's the, the road map. So we're going to say that measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 3. That's these two by the vertical angles theorem. And again, these angles are both equal to 2. So when numbers are, are both equal, or expressions are both equal to a number, they must be equal themselves. So measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 3. And that is the transitive property of equality. So again, transitive, when, when, when two things are equal to the same number, they must be equal also. So transitive property of equality. So we're starting off with a, with a very easy proof here, but we had to use the vertical angles theorem. So now, go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And you're going to use that to do problem number two. Problem number two is almost exactly the same problem, but instead of using numbers to notate the, the uh, angles, you're going to use letters. So see if you can do number two, and when you come back, we'll do it together. <clears throat> All right, we're back. So we're going to start with the given information. We know the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle BCD, and that's given information. So what that means is that this angle, ABC, is equal to this angle, BCD. And we know, obviously, that BCD is equal to ECF because they're vertical angles. You see these two angles here? The two uh, pink ones there, they're vertical angles, so they're, therefore they must be equal. And we know that this green angle is equal to this green angle because they gave us that information. So by the transitive property of equality, ABC must be equal to ECF. 
but we're going to say the vertical angles theorem first. So the measure of angle BCD is equal to the measure of angle ECF. And that is the vertical angles theorem. And so now, do you see what's happening here? Two things are equal to the same number. So that's the transitive property of equality. So measure of angle ABC must be equal to the measure of angle ECF. And that is the transitive property of equality. So if you got those answers, good job. All right, so here we have another example where we have to use the vertical angles theorem. And uh, let's do this one together, and you can do the next one on your own. So these are vertical angles because they're right across from each other. And that's the given information. So angle ABC and angle EBD are vertical angles. And that is given. All right. Um, now, because these are vertical angles, the measure of angle ABC has to be equal to the measure of angle EBD. And that is the vertical angles theorem. So again, that's the point of these problems is we're learning how to use the vertical angles theorem in proofs. Now, we also know from the, from the picture that the measure of angle ABC is equal to 95 degrees. And we also know that the measure of angle EBD is equal to 5x plus 10. And we know that because it's given in the diagram. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 95 here and we're going to plug in 5x plus 10 here. So we're using this equation. We're taking this equation and rewriting it down here. But we're plugging in 95 for ABC and 5x plus 10 for EBD. So that is the substitution property of equality. All right, so now we're going to subtract 10 from both sides, and we get 85 is equal to 5x. That's the subtraction property of equality. So then um, we're going to divide both sides by 5, and we get x is equal to 17. That is the division property of equality. But we haven't proven that x equals 17 yet in the mind of a mathematician. We've proven that 17 equals x. We want to prove that um, we want to prove that x equals 17 up here, not that 17 equals x. So we have to flip it using the symmetric property of equality. So we're done with that one. And I'm just going to color this in here. That's green. This is blue. Just so you can follow what's going on there. All right, so go ahead and take a screenshot of that because you might need it in the next problem. In the next problem, you're going to do pretty much the exact same thing, but I want you to do this one on your own. Now remember, when I tell you to do a problem on your own, that doesn't mean you can fast forward it and just watch me do it. And it doesn't mean that you can skip past it either. You need to do these problems on your own so that when you attempt the homework, you don't get stuck. So uh, remember, uh, you're required to learn fluency 
in math courses, and you can only learn fluency by actually doing the math. If you don't do these problems, then you, it's a guarantee that you're going to learn absolutely nothing. So attempt number four, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Angle FGH and angle JGI are vertical angles. So that's the given information. And we know that those angles are equal, or the measure of those angles are equal by the vertical angles theorem. All right, so we also know that the measure of angle FGH is equal to x plus 60, and the measure of angle JGI is equal to 80 degrees. And that is given in the diagram. So now we're going to uh, substitute. We're going to take x plus 6 and plug it in here, and we're going to take 80 and plug it in here. So I'm taking this equation and I'm going to rewrite it down here, but I'm going to plug in those other values. So x plus 6, or x plus 60, is equal to 80. And that is substitution. And now I'm just going to subtract 60 from both sides, and I end up with x is equal to 20, which is what we're trying to show. And that is the subtraction property of equality. So if you got those answers, good job. All right, so on to number five. In a lot of problems today, we're going to use um, the segment addition postulate. Now, you learned the segment addition postulate, but you haven't used it in proofs. Just like we learned the vertical angles theorem, but we hadn't uh, used it in proofs until this point. So we used the vertical angles theorem for all four of those first problems that we did. But uh, now we're going to use the segment addition postulate. So that just means that the total length AC is equal to the length AB plus the length BC. That's the segment addition postulate. So what we're trying to do is, is, is we're trying to say if this, if this length is, is 9 and this length is 7, then the whole length is 16. And that makes, that makes sense. 9 plus 7 is 16. But we have to, we have to uh, show that with a formal proof, and we have to give a justification for that. So let's get started. The given information is AB is equal to 9, and BC is equal to 7. And now we have to use the uh, segment addition postulate. So this is the important part. This is the new part you haven't seen yet. So AC, I mean, you've seen the segment addition postulate, but you haven't seen it used in proofs. So AC is equal to AB plus BC. And we have a formal name for that, segment addition postulate. And now we're going to use the substitution property. We're going to take 9 and plug it in here. And we're going to take 7 and plug it in here. So we're going to take this equation, and we're going to rewrite it in the next step. But we're going to say AC is equal to 9 plus 7. Again, I just took the, the AB is 9, and the BC is 7. So that is the substitution property of equality. And now I'm going to simplify. 9 plus 7 is 16, so that's simplification. And there we go. So we proved that AC is equal to 16. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's that's a really simple problem. Why do we have to, to, do, to do that? Well, first of all, you have to show a formal proof that AC is equal to 16. And secondly, we're starting off really easy when it comes to these uh, these introduction proofs. 
A lot of students would want to just jump forward, but these proofs get really difficult really fast. So you want to start off easy. All right, so take a screenshot of the, the proof that we just did because you're going to need it in the next problem if you get stuck. And it's time for you to attempt one. So again, you're going to use the segment addition postulate. You have to use that segment addition postulate. So try number six, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. DE is equal to three, and EF is equal to eight, and that's the given information. And we have to use the segment addition postulate, so DF is equal to DE plus EF, segment addition postulate and now we're just going to use substitution so df is equal to de is 3 and ef is 8 so just to demonstrate I plugged in 3 here and I plugged in 8 here so I took this equation and I rewrote it in this step so that is substitution property of equality. I rewrote it, but I plugged in 3 and 8. I substituted, and now I'm just going to simplify, and we get 11. So if you wrote all those steps and all those justifications properly, good job. Uh, I want you to be aware that the order of these steps is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you write the steps. Um, your proof may be slightly different, but generally it should be in this order. It, ha it has to have, you have to have a logical flow. And obviously you can't put the last step as the first step. That wouldn't make any sense. On to number seven. So number seven is going to be very similar, except now we're dealing with angles. So as usual, we'll start with the uh, given information. The measure of ABD is equal to 50 degrees, and the measure of DBC is equal to 60 degrees. Again, this is very similar to the uh, previous type of problems, except we're dealing with angles. And now we have to use the angle addition postulate. Remember, we, used the, we, we learned the segment addition postulate, and we also learned the angle addition postulate. So what we're trying to prove is that uh, ABC, this entire angle, is equal to 110 degrees. So we know that this angle is 50, and we know this angle is 60. So we're going to use the angle addition postulate to show that we can just add 50 and 60, and that's going to be the, the uh, measure of the, the whole angle, ABC. That's what we want to, we want to prove that it equals 110. So we have to use the angle addition postulate, the measure of angle ABC, the whole angle, is equal to the measure of ABD plus the measure of angle DBC. And that is the angle addition postulate. So now we're going to plug things in. The measure of angle ABC is equal to, instead of ABD, we're going to write 50. So that's substitution. And instead of DBC, we're going to write 60, because we know DBC is 60. And that is substitution. Property of equality. And then we are going to simplify, and we get 110 degrees. And that is simplification. So if we color code this, we're taking 50 and we're plugging it in here. And 60 and plugging it in here. So we're taking this equation and rewriting it here, except we're substituting. All right, so take a screenshot of that because you're going to do the same type of problem next. 
Again, the difference here is we're using the angle addition postulate rather than the segment addition postulate. So I want you to try this problem. And again, you're going to need the angle addition postulate. So write the given information and use that angle addition postulate. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. The measure of angle ABD is 115 degrees because they told us that. And the measure of angle DBC is equal to 40 degrees. They told us that. We're assuming that that's true. And we need to use the angle addition postulate. So the measure of angle ABC, this entire angle is equal to the angle ABD, or the measure of the angle ABD, plus the measure of angle the measure of angle DBC. That is the angle addition postulate. So now we're going to plug in 115 for ABD and 40 for DBC. So measure of angle ABC is equal to 115 plus 40. And that's the substitution property. And then we're just going to simplify. And we get 155 degrees. And that is simplification. So if you got all those answers, good job. So now we're going on to some problems that are uh, slightly more complicated. Now you're going to need to put your thinking cap on here. This problem is not is not super difficult, but it is uh, more more complex. And we're going to use the uh, segment addition postulate. So let's do this one together. We know that uh, uh, BC lies between AD. And remember, in geometry, when you hear that phrase, in between, that assumes that they're collinear. That terminology is just assumed to mean they're collinear. So again, BC is between AD on the same segment. And we want to show that AD is equal to the sum of all those smaller segments. So AD, the whole thing, is equal to AB plus BC plus CD. Now, again, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why do we have to prove that? That's obvious. Well, again, uh, in geometry, you have to show formal proofs. So the given information is that uh, B and C lie between A and D, and that is given. Now, here's the part where it's going to get weird. So you're going to need to pay attention to this. What we're going to do is we're going to show that AD, the whole length, is equal to AC plus CD. So we're going to pretend that B is not even there. We're just going to ignore it. So AD is equal to AC plus CD. And that is the segment addition postulate. So again, that's the weird part. Um, AD, the whole thing, is equal to AC plus CD. We're ignoring B. We're pretending it's not there. So that's the segment addition postulate, ignoring B. But now we're going to use the segment addition postulate again. We're going to say that AC, that's this length from here to here, is equal to AB plus BC. Isn't that correct? AC is equal to AB plus BC. So AC is equal to AB plus BC. That's just the segment addition postulate using um, a different part of the segment. So we use the segment addition postulate twice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use substitution. We're going to take this equation and we're going to re rewrite it down here. 
So AD is equal to, but instead of AC, instead of AC, we're going to plug in AB plus BC. Because we know AC, according to the blue equation here, we know that AC is equal to AB plus BC. <clears throat> so again, we plug that blue part in right here. And now, you may have noticed, we're done. So we proved that AD is equal to AB plus BC plus CD. And that was uh, substitution. So why don't you take a screenshot of that? Because you're going to use it in the next problem. The next problem is going to be almost exactly the same thing that we just did. The only difference is now you're using angles. So what you're going to show is that AF, uh, excuse me, that should be an E right there. You're going to show that AED, the whole thing, the whole angle is equal to the sum of the smaller parts. So um, you're going to use the same logic. You're, you're going to use the, instead of the segment addition postulate, you're going to use the angle addition postulate. Now, notice here we don't have an if-then statement. We just have a mathematical equation that you're going to prove is true. So there's a big question, what is the given information? For the given information, you can just say um, diagram. That's the given information. That's, that's what we know for sure. So I'm going to give you that first step. So, so given that diagram, prove that this mathematical statement is true using the same steps that we used for, uh, for, to, to prove the, the, segment, uh, the segment properties in, in the, the previous problem. So try number 10, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we know that the measure of AED, the whole thing, the measure of angle AED is equal to the measure of AEC plus the measure of angle CED. Now again, you're probably wondering, why in the world are we doing that? Why are we why are we saying AEC? Because we're saying the measure of the whole the measure of the whole thing is equal to the measure of this part. We're just ignoring the ray EB. We're saying equal to that this part plus this part. So this part plus this part is equal to uh, the whole angle. So that is the angle addition postulate, and we're just ignoring one of the rays pretending that the ray EB is not there. So now we know that the we're going to take this part, AEC, and we're going to use the angle addition postulate to demonstrate something in the next step. So we know that the measure of angle AEC, using the segment addition postulate, the, the measure of angle AEC is equal to AEB plus BEC. Let me just make sure I have that right, AEB and BEC. So now we're almost done, but I need to write uh, angle addition postulate. So we use the angle addition postulate twice. So now let's just make sure we understand what's going on here. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to rewrite it in the fourth step. And let's color code things. So we know that AEB um, or AEC is equal to all of this stuff here. So now we're going to rewrite that, that circled pink equation down here. 
but instead of writing measure of angle AEC, we're going to write all of this stuff because we know measure of angle AEC equals the measure of angle AEB plus the measure of angle BEC. And then lastly, plus the measure of, and we're going to have to shrink this, plus the measure of angle CED. So again, I just took this green part and I plugged it in here. And that was substitution. So you can see at that point, we're done. So it was the same principle as, as problem number nine, except we're using the angle addition postulate and we're using angles instead of segments. So if you got those answers, good job. All right, so now we're going on to something uh, pretty different. Um, in these problems, we're going to use the uh, linear pair postulate. That's another postulate that we learned. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. And that postulate says that if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. And what that means is that these two angles are going to add up to 180. That's what supplementary means. And we know that these form a linear pair because the non-common sides are opposite rays. They're adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. This just this makes a straight angle. You combine them and you make a straight angle. So they form a linear pair. Now this is an example of a problem where I would not write the given information first. I would actually write the given information on the third or fourth step because it just, it just works better in the logical flow of uh, arguments. So in, in, the, in this problem, again, 95% of the time, you're going to write the given information first. But in this problem, we're going to say that um, angle ABC and angle CBD form a linear pair. And how do we know that? Well, we can see it in the diagram. It's given in the diagram. And again, we can see that because these non-common sides form opposite rays. It's a straight straight angle. They form uh, they come together to form a straight angle. So we now know that angle ABC and angle CBD are supplementary. And we know that by the linear pair postulate. So if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So at this point, you're thinking, well, who cares that they're supplementary? Well, we care because supplementary means that the measure of angle ABC plus the measure of angle CBD is equal to 180 degrees. That's what supplementary means. So that's the definition of supplementary angles. All right, so now we're going to write the given information. We know that the measure of ABC is 130 degrees. That is given. And so we're going to take this equation now and we're going to rewrite it down here except we're going to plug in 130 for ABC. And so that is substitution. And now we're going to use the subtraction rule. This is the subtraction property of equality. We're going to subtract 130 from both sides, and we get the measure of angle CBD is equal to 50 degrees. And that's what we were trying to prove. The measure of angle CBD is 50 degrees. So you can see that we had to use um, we, it, this, this, this proof was, was different because we didn't start with the given information. We started by saying that they form a linear, these angles form a linear pair. Then we had to use the linear pair postulate to show that they're supplementary. 
We were to explain that they're supplementary, then we had to use the definition of supplementary angles to show that they add up to 180, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot going on there, and we're, you're going to do a problem just like that in number 12. So take a screenshot of a number, number 11, and you can use that as a guide to do number 12. So again, you need to use the linear pair postulate. So attempt number 12, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Remember, in the first step, it's not going to be the given information. It's going to be uh, that uh, these two angles, angle GEF and angle DEG, they form a linear pair. And that's a given in the diagram. That's the first step. So try number 12, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Angle GEF and angle DEG form a linear pair. And how do we know that? Well, we can see it in the diagram. It's given in the diagram. So now, because they form a linear pair, we know that angle GEF and angle DEG are supplementary. And we know that by the linear pair postulate. So what does that mean? If they're supplementary, what does that mean? Why do we care? Well, we care that they're supplementary because, by definition, supplementary angles, their measures add up to 180. So GEF plus DEG, or, or GEF plus DEG equals 180, and that is the definition of supplementary angles. Um, now we're going to use the given information. So we know they told us we're supposed to assume that the measure of GEF is equal to 60. And that's the given information. And now we're going to take this equation here and we're going to rewrite it in step number five. But instead of GEF, we're going to plug in 60. We're going to use substitution to plug in 60. Substitution property of equality. So we substituted GEF for, or we substituted 60 for GEF. So now we're going to subtract 60 from both sides, and we get the measure of angle DEG is equal to 120 degrees. And it looks like we're not really going to need the last, the last Roman numeral there. And that is the subtraction. We subtracted 60 from both sides, so that's the subtraction property of equality. All right, so if you got those answers, good job. Again, that was a problem where we didn't write the given information first, and we had to use the linear pair postulate. We also had to remember that the uh, supplementary angles, their measures add up to 180 degrees. These are all things that you're going to have to memorize. All right, so on to the next problem. Again, we, we've, we've learned how to use the vertical angles theorem in proofs. And we've learned how to use the segment addition postulate in proofs. And we've learned how to use the angle addition postulate in proofs. And we've now learned how to use the, uh, the uh, linear pair postulate in proofs. That's if you have a linear pair of angles. They, they, when you put them together, they make a, a line, a, a straight angle. So now we're going to... Uh, we're going to do the converse of problem number one. So in problem number one, it said if the measure of angle one and the measure, or the, 
if the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two, then the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three. But now we're going in the opposite direction. We're saying if the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three, then one equals two and so on and so forth. So again, we're trying to say that if this measure, if this angle equals this angle, then this angle equals this angle. That's the converse of problem number one. So I want you to try this on your own. This is a pretty easy proof. But remember, you're going to have to use the vertical angles theorem. These are vertical angles. Therefore, we know that their measures are equal. So try number 13. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. We know that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. And that's given. Now we know that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 2. And how do we know that? Well, these are vertical angles, therefore they must be equal by the vertical angles theorem. So now we're going to use the transitive property. So these two angles uh, are, are the same. So that means that angle 1 and angle 2 must be equal to them to each other. Because again, you have two things that are equal to the same number. So therefore, therefore, they must be equal to themselves. That's the transitive property of equality. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. And that is the transitive So if you got those those uh, if you got those justifications and all those steps, good job. So we use the vertical uh, vertical angles theorem again. Now we're going to do something that's uh, a little strange here. We're going to prove the one of the properties of congruence. Now remember, we learned the properties of equality. The properties of equality apply to numbers only. But we also learn the properties of congruence. And those properties apply to shapes. But we haven't really uh, used the properties of congruence yet. Um, we're going to use those uh, later on in the course. But the properties of congruence, unlike the properties of equality, the properties of congruence can actually be proved. The properties of equality that just uh, involve numbers, uh, those are just assumed to be true. But uh, the properties of congruence, many textbooks will actually ask you to prove those. And the proof, in my opinion, is kind of ridiculous. But again, there's a lot in geometry that you have to do or that they make you do, even though, um, even though it seems uh, tedious and uh, unnecessary. So now we have the transitive property of congruence. And we're using segments as an example. So this says that if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, and if segment CD is congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is congruent to segment EF. That's the transitive property of congruence applied to segments. So we're going to just practice proving a, a property of congruence, just so you know what it's going to look like if, you, if, you, uh, if, if you're required to do this. So we assume we, we're given the information AB, the segment AB is congruent to segment CD. And we're also given the information that segment CD is congruent to segment EF. Now, by definition, if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, that means the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. And same thing with the other equation. The length of CD must be equal to the length of EF if those segments are, are congruent. And that is the definition of congruent segments. So now you can see where we're going with this. AB and EF are both equal to the same thing. They're both equal to CD. So by the transitive property of equality, and notice we're using equality, it's not congruence anymore. We're not talking about congruence. 
because these are these are just lengths. These are just regular numbers. So we're going to use a transitive property of equality to show that uh, those are equal. And that's that's pretty much how uh, the proofs for the properties of congruence work. You always use the properties of equality to show that the properties of congruence are uh, are correct, are true. So now, by definition, if the length of AB is equal to the length of EF, then by definition, the segment AB must be congruent to the segment EF. And that's by the definition of congruent segments. So <clears throat> that's how you prove uh, the transitive property of congruence. Use the tra the transitive property of equality. So now I want you to why don't you go ahead and take a screenshot of that so you can reference it. And I want you to try number fifteen, which is going to be pretty much the same thing. You're going to be proving the transitive property of congruence again, except now you're going to be using angles. So uh, go on attempt number fifteen, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. We know angle A is congruent to angle B, and we know that angle B is congruent to angle C. That's given information. By definition, we know the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B because they're congruent, and the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle C because those two angles are congruent. And that is the definition of congruent angles. So now you can see where we're going here. Both, M, both A and C are equal to the same thing, B. So by the transitive property of equality, again, it's equality because measures are talking about numbers. They're not talking about shapes. So by the transitive property of equality, measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle C. then by definition, angle A must be congruent to angle C, which is what we're trying to prove. And that is, the reason for that is it's the definition of congruent angles. So if you got number 15 right, good job. All right, on to number 16. So now we're going to do a problem where we have an angle bisector. If ray BD bisects angle ABC, then the measure of angle DBC is equal to one half the measure of angle ABC. So what that means is if this ray bisects, if this ray here bisects this angle, then uh, then this angle here must be equal to half this whole angle. Now you can probably see why that's true, but we have to give a formal proof for that. So we're going to start with the given information. We're going to do this one together, and you can do the next one on your own. So we know that ray BD bisects angle ABC. That's given information. Now, by definition, if ray BD bisects angle ABC, that means angle ABD is equal to angle DBC, or the measures are equal. So again, that's just a definition of, of an angle bisector. So measure of angle ABD is equal to measure of angle DBC, definition of angle bisector. Now we need to use the angle addition postulate. So we've used that postulate quite a few times in this class, and for your homework, you're probably going to need it. Uh, so be aware of that. So we know that the uh, measure of angle ABC 
is equal to the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC. That is the angle addition postulate. Now, we know that the measure of ABD is equal to the measure of DBC. So in this equation here, we're just going to plug in DBC for ABD because step number two tells us that they're equal. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to rewrite it in the next step except instead of measure of angle ABD we're going to write measure of angle DBC. So again we plugged it in here. If that is a substitution and now we're just going to simplify. We, these two expressions are the same so we can add them together to just say two times measure of angle DBC. Measure of angle DBC plus measure of angle DBC is just equal to two times the measure of angle DBC. And I'm going to write that a little, a little better there. DBC. Add them up, you get two times the measure of angle DBC. And that is just simplification. So we're trying to prove that the measure of DBC is equal to one-half ABC. We're, we're close. What we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 2, and then we end up with measure of angle ABC over 2. Well, let me get this out of the way. Measure of angle ABC divided by 2 is equal to measure of angle DBC, and that is the division property of equality. Whoops. So at this point, we're pretty much done. Um, but uh, we sh we, we're trying to prove that uh, DBC equals one-half ABC. We, we, we proved that uh, one-half ABC is equal to, so, so we have to flip it around. We have to use a symmetric property of equality. And I'm just going to put the one-half on the outside. It doesn't really matter if you put it on the bottom or, in the, or, or the, out the, to the left of it. because I just want it to look like uh, the expression above. So we've proven that DBC is equal to one-half ABC. And that was the symmetric property. Of equality. So now it's your, your turn to try one of those types of problems, but we're going to uh, use a seg segment problem here. And instead of an angle bisector, we have a, uh, a segment bisector. But instead of calling it a segment bisector, we call it the midpoint. The midpoint is still a, 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 a segment bisector. It's just two different ways to say it. So you can take a screenshot or you can just, I'll just leave this here so you can see number 16. And for number 17, you're going to use the segment, uh, so the segment addition postulate. In this previous problem, we used the angle addition postulate. You're going to use the segment addition postulate for number 17. So try number 17, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So the given information is M is the midpoint of the segment AB. Now by definition we know that AM must be equal to MB. 
because uh, M is the midpoint. Now, we know that here's where the segment addition postulate comes in. We know that AB is equal to AM plus MB. Now we're going to take MB and plug it in for AM. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to rewrite it in the next step. AB is equal to, but instead of AM, we're going to plug in MB for AM. And that is substitution. So now we're going to simplify MB plus MB is two times MB. You're just you're just adding them. It's like one apple plus one apple is two apples. So that is simplification. And we're done. We proved it. AB is equal to two MB. So if you write if you got those justifications and all those steps, good job. All right, on to number eighteen. Now. When you're doing uh, proof problems where you have to prove statements, oftentimes you're given proofs that you haven't necessarily seen before. All the problems so far, or most of the problems we've done so far today, are problems where I show you the basic problem and then you do one that's almost exactly alike. But in the last three problems today, I'm going to give you uh, proofs that we haven't done. I, I haven't done problems that are similar to these, but the good news is the next three problems are, are uh, the next three proofs are pretty easy, so it shouldn't be that difficult, but again, you're going to see proofs that you've never seen before. You have to get used to figuring them out, but you're going to use all the tools that we've used so far, the segment addition postulate, or maybe the angle addition postulate, or the linear pair postulate, and so on and so forth. Um, maybe the vertical angles theorem. So uh, go ahead and try number 18. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. The given information is that ray or, or line DE bisects segment AC. And that's given. Now, by definition, if DE bisects AC, that means by definition the length AB, the length of AB, is equal to the length of BC. So, by definition, AB must be congruent to BC. And that is the definition of congruent segments. So that was a pretty easy one. So if you got those answers, good job. All right, on to number 19. This is also one that you haven't seen, but the good news is it's really easy. Just use the tools that you have. Um, and go into attempt number 19, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So that's given information. And we know that by definition, the length of AB must be equal to the length of CE. That's a definition of congruent segments. Now, we also know that uh, CE is equal to CD plus DE, and that is the segment addition postulate. 
So this length, the whole length of this thing, is equal to the length here plus the length here. Segment addition postulate. Let me write that D a little better there. C, D. All right, so you can see what's going to happen here. We have AB is equal to CE. And this expression is also equal to CE. So you have two things that are equal to CE. You see the CEs here? So these two blue expressions are both equal to CE. So by the transitive property of equality, AB must be equal to CD plus DE. And that is the transitive property of equality. And that's what we're trying to prove. So um, if you got those answers, good job. Again, you've never seen that problem. If you get stuck on these, that's OK. It's OK to get stuck on proofs that you've never seen before. But uh, you should have the tools that you need to uh, figure these out. So now we're going to do one more problem today. And then you're going to do your homework. If angle ABC below is a right angle, then measure of ABD is 65 degrees. So what is a right angle? They're saying that this whole angle here is a right angle. What does that mean? Well, that means that the measure of the angle is 90 degrees. And they want us to find uh, the measure of ABD. So ABD is this angle here. They want us to show that that's 65. So this problem is a, is a little more involved, but you have all the tools that you need to attempt this problem. Uh, and if you get stuck, that's OK. Um, we'll do it together, but I want you to attempt this problem. And again, you've never seen this particular problem. So uh, the purpose of this is for you to get used to figuring things out on your own. So try number 20, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Angle ABC is a right angle. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that the measure of ABD, ABC is equal to 90 degrees. And by the way, that was given information. And we know it's 90 degrees because that's the definition of a right angle. Now, we need to use, we need to find x. We can't prove that ABD is, is equal to 65 degrees unless we find x. But we can't use, we can't find x unless we come up with some sort of an equation. So we're going to have to use the angle addition postulate. So the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC angle addition postulate. So we also need to know that uh, the measure of angle ABD is equal to 2x plus 25. And let me move this stuff down. And we know that the measure of angle DBC is equal to x plus 5. How do we know that? Well, it's given in the diagram. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation here, and we're going to rewrite it in the fifth step. But we're going to plug in things that we know. So we know that measure of ABD is 90 degrees. So I'm going to plug in 90 there. And we also know that ABD is equal to 2x plus 25. So I'm going to plug in that. And we also know that 
uh, DBC. I'm going to use yellow for that. DBC is equal to x plus 5. So I just plugged all those in, and that is uh, the substitution property of equality. So we use substitution three times. All right, so now all we have to do is solve this equation. Well, actually, that's not all we have to do. We have to solve the equation to find x, and then we have to plug it back in to this expression to find or to show that measure of ABD is equal to 65. All right, so 90, and then add the x. 2x plus x is 3x, and 25 plus 5 is 30. So we just simplified. We just simplified this side of the equation. We just combined the x's, and we combined the normal numbers. So that was simplification. So now we're going to subtract 30 from both sides. So that is the subtraction property of equality. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3 to get 20 is equal to x. That's the division property of equality. Now we don't have to use the symmetric property of equality. We don't have to flip that around because we're just looking for x. All right, and the next step, step number 9, we're now going to show that the measure of ABD is equal to 65. Now we already showed that the measure of ABD is equal to 2x plus 25, so now we just have to plug it in. or substitute. Substitution, property of equality. So now we just have to simplify. Two times 20 is 40. 40 plus 25 is 65. And you can put your degree symbol there for the last step. So we showed that the measure of ABD is equal to 65 degrees. And that was simplification. All right, so if you did all those steps, good job. That was a big one. Um, so that was the class today. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take screenshots of these, these pages so you can use them to uh, do your homework or study for tests. And the third page, the third screenshot, and the fourth screenshot. And the fifth. And the sixth. So now let's look at your homework. Here's the first screenshot. And the second screenshot. And that is your uh, homework assignment, but don't go, don't go until you get the, the answers. Notice that there's only 15 problems. Proofs take a lot of steps, so I'm only giving you 15 problems now. Now I want you to be aware that in the homework, there are some, there's, there's some problems that you've never seen. So you're going to have to figure them out, out on your own. And I know you don't want to do that, but you're going to have to start getting used to figuring out proofs on your own that you, that you have never seen. Uh, but most of them uh, are, are going to be fairly familiar because they're almost exactly the same as the problems I gave you in class today. So now take screenshots of the answers. You're going to need the answers. It's not enough that you attempt the homework. It's got to be correct. All 
All right, so remember to do the homework completely and correctly and neatly. And most of all, you need to know where your homework is. So put all your homework in your binder and put it in chronological order. And uh, again, if you don't do the homework, I promise you with every fiber in my being that you're going to learn absolutely nothing in this course. So get that homework done, and I look forward to seeing you in the next class.